When I create a routing offset toolpath for, for objects like this, I've just got some simple rectangles here. So when I create a routing offset, in this case one inch deep, and if I go in here and edit the number of passes, obviously I'm going to create it in, in multiple passes if I'm cutting, say, some dense material or whatever. So, so now I've created a routing offset uh, with four passes for two objects. And, and when I output that to the machine, uh, I've got it set up for, for the type of machine that I have. Um, I'm going to call it regular lift. So what it does is it, it creates the output and, and then sort of by default, it lifts up in between each of the passes uh, up to the, the kind of full lift height. And that's something that Enroute has always done. And there's lots of good reasons for doing that. And if I, if I get into backplot here, I'm going to open my output file. And it's a pretty standard G code file. And so if I, if I look at the perspective view, you can see that it, it comes over, drops down, does the pass and then drops down again. So if we, if we step through this, let's just step through it real quickly here to get an idea of, of what it's doing. So, so here I'm at the full height of a minus 1.25 so it's a quarter of an inch above the the top of the material then it drops down to 0.75 which is which is the first pass so so a quarter of an inch below the surface of the material and then does that pass and then here you can see there's a g00 that goes up to z of minus 1.25 so it lifts back up to the full lift height and and then drops down to minus 0.5 so another quarter of an inch down so that's the second pass does the same thing now it lifts up to minus 1.2.1.25 and then drops down to to 0.25 so that's the third pass and if i step down does the same thing and then and then ultimately it's going to drop down to zero and make the pass round. And then at the end of that four passes, of course, it's going to lift all the way back out and then move over to the next tool path and, and do the same thing again. So, so there you see kind of the standard procedure as far as the way in route does it, as far as lifting out. Now, lifting out between each pass has the advantage of helping to, to clear the bit and to, to give the bit a chance to, to cool a little bit before it does the next pass. And, and so it's, been kind of a standard thing. This works well in general and is is probably the way that you should should operate um, most of the time. But we do have users that occasionally uh, note that this adds to the cut time. And so if you have a lot of small pieces that you're cutting, then the, all of that lifting up in between passes can can really add to the length of the of the cut. And so. One of the things that we've implemented in Route 2022 is the ability to have some more control over that lifting. Uh, it doesn't really affect how the toolpaths are created. So, so in this case, I don't really need to change the toolpaths that I've created, but I can get into preferences and I can specify some things about uh, the lift options. So right now you see I, I have under general toolpath show lift options, I have that turned off. And so I'm going to have that turned on now and I'm going to say standard and and then I'm going to uh, apply that. And so I lied earlier, I do need to make a change to my toolpaths here. Uh, I'm going to get in and define this and if I get into the cut, you see I now have the option to define the lift. And so I have some different options here. I have standard material value none. So, so no lift would mean no lifting in between passes. Standard would be the way that we just saw. And then material would lift up to the top of the material between each pass or value would allow me to specify an amount that I want to lift up between each pass. So, so what I'm going to do just for kind of clarity's sake is I'm going to turn on 
none, meaning no lift between passes. And I'm going to create the toolpaths. The toolpaths don't look any different here, uh, but now I'm going to create an output file and I'm going to send it to file and I'm going to say no lift. Okay, and so now if I get into backplot and I'm going to open up the no lift and you see that I have step mode turned on. So if I if I turn this on, it doesn't really look any different and and the differences are really pretty subtle. Um, so if I if I step through this So you see I'm down to the minus 0.75. I started out at the minus 1.25. So sort of the same starting position in the full lift mode and then minus 0.75. So previously this would have lifted up to minus 1.25 at the G00. So in this case it, it stays at that height and then the tool drops down to the minus 0.5, does all of that. And then here it stays at that minus 0.5 until it drops down to the minus 0.25. So the difference here is the fact that this, instead of lifting up to the minus 1.25 at the G00 there, it stays at the cut depth. Now with the different options, I could have it lift up to the top of the material. I could have it lift up by a certain amount. Uh, all of those are, are options that would change basically the amount that this lifts up each time. But then you see that when I get down to the to the bottom of the fourth toolpath then I'm coming around here so at the bottom here now I'm going to lift back up to the minus 1.25 and back over and and down to the next toolpath so that's that's using the what we would call the no lift option where it truly is a no lift in terms of what it does but it doesn't really change the it doesn't really change the sort of the format of the output. It, I still have a G00 there that um, is going to specify the amount that it lifts each time, ranging from no lift, like in this case, up to a certain amount that it would lift up to say by an amount or up to the top of the material. And so, so that's kind of that option. So, so one of the things uh, that has been brought up is that uh, some some people are uncomfortable with this as being available, and so so you notice that in preferences, I can get in here and I can turn this off so that it's it's not something that's going to be presented to the user when the toolpaths are created. Um, and then there's also another option that we would call a a linked toolpath. So if I click OK, if I have that turned on, it it sort of overrides the the sort of the amount of the of the lift and and makes it a true no lift option but if i output this here to file i'm going to call it a linked no lift create the output now if i get into back plot and open that up Okay, so what you're going to notice, and I'm going to turn off step mode here, it doesn't really look different when I just look at the, the file, but what you'll see is there's, there's a, sort of a significant difference in the format of the output, um, and particularly what it does essentially is it treats these four passes as one long toolpath that's linked together uh, without the the lifts, the G00s in this case, the lifts up between passes. And so the, what it means is there isn't an opportunity at that point for the, the, the intent of the toolpath to be misinterpreted at the machine in terms of a G00 that doesn't lift, maybe confuses the controller for certain types of machines. And so if you make it a link toolpath, then uh, in that case, it's it's essentially treated as a single toolpath, and then route takes care of the the fact that there isn't a lift in between the passes. So if I if I do a step here, and I step down, so I'm coming around, 
And at this point now, you see that I don't have a G00. It just drops down to that next depth and then works its way around, gets there, and then, and then drops down. So you see here it's gone from a minus 0.5 to a minus 0.25. So it drops down there and comes around, does the fourth pass and down. And then at the end of this, you'll see now I do have a G00, a new tool path to find and then it lifts back up, moves over to the next one, and then does the same thing until it gets around. So, so if you look at the format of the output here, you see I don't have the sort of the new contour, the new toolpath defined in the output. In this case, it's an M12 that indicates the new, the new toolpath. And so the beginning and the end is an M22. So I don't have that between the passes here because I've linked that toolpath together when I output it. And the advantage of that then is you, you sort of remove the opportunity for misinterpretation at the machine side of the intent of the toolpath if, if that really is an issue. Um, and so in order to accomplish that, you just have to come in here to preferences and go to toolpath and show the lift options and then make it the link toolpath instead of the standard. And, and then that gives you control over, over the type of output that's going to be created with the no lift option. So the simplest way, leave it turned off. You don't see it. It works just the way it did before. But if you do turn it on, then you have an option of the, of the format of the output to make sure that uh, things stay safe in terms of at the machine side, in terms of, of the interpretation of the output, if you think that's an issue. I think in general, it's not an issue, uh, but if there's concern about that, then this provides that option for that linked output. And so then the way that the toolpaths have defi been defined, if, if the no lift option is selected, then it will link them together and, and will output them that way. So anyway, kind of a long explanation, but that's the no lift option uh, that was done in a way to, to give the user uh, hopefully full control over what the options are to ensure that the output is done in a way that is that is uh, consistent and safe and predictable and all of those things that we depend on for output from en route. So anyway, that's the no lift option in en route 2022.